Welcome to the 2019 Toronto International Film Festival. My name is Michael Lerman. I'm the co-lead on special presentations. And welcome to the world premiere of Dirt Music. So, yeah. <laughs> to begin with, I'd like to acknowledge that tonight's event is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat. And we are so thankful to be working in the community today and every day of every year. Yeah. This film is eligible for the Girls People's Choice Award. You can vote for your favorite films at tiff.net slash vote. Um, I also want to thank our amazing partners at 30 West and Cornerstone Films. They've been really great helping set all this up. Can we get a round of applause for them too, please? <laughs> and of course, our incredible partners at Screen Australia uh, who bring us amazing Australian films every year. Can I get a round of applause for them? Because they're so, so great to us. This film was pretty special and kind of came out of nowhere for us. Uh, and obviously it's a lot of amazing things, including the big screen cinematography, the nuances in the relationships. But what really impressed us was the really sophisticated way the story was told. Um, and because of that, it's with great pleasure that I bring to the stage right now, director Gregor Jordan. <laughs> um. Thank you very much. Um, I'd just like to thank Michael and the, uh, everyone at the Toronto Festival. It's such an honour to be here and um, a really big deal to be able to show the, audience, um, show the film for the first time. Um, I'd just like to introduce a few of our cast um, who've made it here. Um, first and foremost, um, Kelly McDonald. <clears throat> We also have uh, George Mason here tonight. <clears throat> and the wonderful Julia Stone is here. Um, so um, we're going to be all back after the screening for a QA. and a um, But I've just got a few quick thank yous. I won't take long, I promise. Um, I'd just like to thank um, Daniel Batsek and everyone at Film4, um, our wonderful um, financier who just stayed with the project the whole way and has just been so incredibly supportive. Um, likewise, Graham Mason and um, everyone at Screen Australia. Um, obviously, this Australian industry would just not exist without um, these kinds of organisations and these kinds of um, amazing people running them. Um, we've also got uh, Mark Gooder and Alison Thompson, um, at Cornerstone, um, uh, uh, Trevor at 30 West and Peter Touche and everyone at Ingenious. Um, I'd, I'd really like to thank all the people of Western Australia, particularly the Bardi Jawi people who are the indigenous um, traditional owners um, of, um, from, of where we shot the film and I think you'll appreciate it after you see it that um, having them involved in the film and the filmmaking process is a really big deal for us. Um, <clears throat> um, I'd also like to thank um, the brilliant Tim Winton who created the, the novel that this whole thing is based on. Um, and then also the brilliant Jack Thorne who managed to somehow take this incredible sprawling esoteric novel and turn it into a screenplay that could actually be financed and shot. Um, it, that's a miracle in itself. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'd like to thank our producers, Angie Fielder, Polly Staniforth and Amanda Posey. Um, but I'd especially like to thank our producer, Fanola Dwyer, who, whose vision it was to take this material and to put this whole project together and also for giving me the opportunity to come and work on it. Um, I just am eternally grateful to have that opportunity. Um, so thank you, Fanola. Um, um, and I'd also like to thank my wife, Simon, and my two boys. <laughs> um, because I had to leave them for pretty much a year to make this film. So um, they went through a hard time, you know, and, and their blood, sweat, and tears is up there on the screen. Um, but look, most of all, I'd like to thank everyone here um, for 
for being here and coming to watch the film. And um, this is the world premiere and you're the first people who are ever going to see it. Um, so I, I, um, it's, it's not my film anymore, it's your film now. So I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> so I wanted to start by um, talking a little bit about the performances, and this is kind of for all of you. I think the, the performances are so beautifully nuanced and um, very carefully done, and I was wondering um, what what your kind of process was working with the actors and also your process was getting to know each other. Was there a lot of rehearsal time? Was there um, time spent offset kind of developing character, et cetera? Um, there, was, um, there was a little bit of rehearsal time, um, mostly just sort of talking about what we we're going to do and just sort of being clear about all the scenes and the intentions of the scenes. Um, and, you know, um, it, it, I, I guess it just involved a lot of discussion, really. We didn't sort of run the scenes in advance. Um, and, um, but look, I, I mean, my personal uh, way of directing actors is um, different for every single actor. And, um, you know, for Kelly, um, you know, she was just incredibly meticulously re rehearsed herself and was very... <laughs> Um, very, very well, re well prepared, and so um, ninety percent. Really good of actress. <laughs> <laughs> well, ninety percent of working with Kelly was really just sort of, you know, trying to work out what she wanted to do, and um, you know, trying to find a way to capture it on camera, um, you know, because she, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> Does any of you want to add in terms of the dynamic between you as a cast? I think I think um, the Fox family their how they bonded is an interesting story. Yeah, I I guess it is interesting. We were I mean I um, my background is playing music and so Gregor wanted us to be a band and so we were put into a house together for a week um, to become a band. So it was a little bit like a reality television show. <laughs> And we... It was actually your suggestion. It was. Yeah. You said, hey, we should, all, we should all live together or something just so we get to know each other and play together. Yeah, I mean, I was and nervous Fanola, about... And Fanola said, hey, that's a great idea. and Let's make that happen. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was kind of um, scary, the idea of making a sound that felt real musically because, I mean, I think historically with music, it's sort of like you develop that sound over years and... Um, but these guys... Garrett and George, um, yeah, <laughs> they are, they're both so musical and so we had this week together playing and writing music and singing music um, uh, with Clee who is the music supervisor and we, um, yeah, we just kind of got to know each other so by the time we were filming it felt like we were a really a band and a family. Yeah. Incidentally, Garrett um, can't be here tonight because he's actually working. Um, and he's really sad that he can't be here and sends his love to everyone, so. Um, I wanted to ask Kelly, you know, we are big fans of Australian cinema and we're also big fans of your work. Um, so this was kind of a, an amazing ma marriage of the two things. I was wondering how you, what drew you to this specific project? Um, I, I just really loved the script. I hadn't read Tim Winton's novel and um, so my introduction um, to the story was um, via Jack's um, script, which was just, you know, completely compelling and beautiful. And um, I just loved Georgie. I loved her flaws and I understood, I just sort of felt like I, I understood what she was all about um, from the first few, few pages. And then I um, had a, FaceTime, Skype, one of those, uh, with Gregor. And um, 
And that was quite a long one, actually, because usually they're not very long, those chats. And I mean, in, in a good way, it wasn't like, I'm not complaining. It was, but it was like an hour and a half and we had a lot to chat about. So that was quite good. Um, yeah, and I just, I loved being Australian for a bit. And I was just saying backstage, I really, I want to be Australian again. And I, I, like I kind of, when I talk to myself, which is not a sign of mental illness, it's just like sometimes things come out of my mouth, but when I'm on my own, but um, they come out in an Australian accent now. So that's like, an, that's the thing. <laughs> I think that is mental illness. <laughs> If it was in my own accent, it's yeah. not mental You're illness, but I changed the accent, so yeah. I want to ask you a little bit about playing with the time structure, and, and f was a lot of that found in the editing process? Was it all in the script? Was it, you know? Um, it, it, it was mostly there in the script. I mean, Tim Winton sort of structured his novel, um, you know, in a, in a fairly non-linear way. Um, and, you know, there were a lot of flashbacks happening in the novel, and Jack... Um, sort of took that device from the novel and incorporated it into the screenplay. Um, but I guess, you know, working out exactly the right flow and what to put where and, you know, how to have it all, um, you know, feeling like it, you know, worked organically um, involved a lot of trial and error in the edit. And we, you know, we definitely had... It was a, it was a long editing process and actually, you know, very, very complicated getting you know, what we thought was the right cut. Um, it, you know, it was, it was tricky. <laughs> I'm going to open it up to the audience. Does anybody have any questions? I'll start here. Uh, Ali, I just want to say amazing job with the accent. Oh. It was fantastic. Thank you. That means a lot coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> and Gregor, just the shooting locations. How tough was it to get to some of these places? So the question was on the shooting locations, just making sure the balcony can hear. Um, uh, how tough was it to get to some of these places? Um, it was just crazy actually um i mean it was a real process trying to work out how to shoot this film because you know the novel was set in the in this very specific place and um i guess when we started coming to mount the production we went to the real place and saw how unique it was but also how remote it is it's literally just in the middle of nowhere um and so trying to trying to work out how to get a film crew um, up there and get any sort of production quality was really, really hard and, you know, involved a lot of hard work from all the uh, production team, um, you know, just working out the logistics. Um, and they did a fantastic job. It, it actually ran pretty seamlessly. But, you know, the crew that we took up there was pretty reduced. We did, you know, we couldn't take lights up there. We couldn't have a dolly up there. We couldn't have a steady cam up there. We had to shoot it in a certain way that, you know, was very economical and worked. Um, but, you know, it, it was, um, you know, it involved going to Perth and flying for three and a half hours to Broome, then going for 300 kilometres on a dirt road up to the end of Cape Levick, then getting on boats and um, taking all the equipment out to these, you know, deserted islands and shooting all day in 40 degree heat um, with crocodile spotters, um, <laughs> making sure no one got eaten. So it was, um, it was pretty tough. Up here? Uh, yeah, this question is for Ellie. Uh, Karen and I have used the chemistry all right from the first scene with the ocean there. Uh, did that come right away to you, or did it develop a little bit more as the picture went on? So the question was um, you have amazing chemistry with Garrett. Did it come right away, or did it develop as the picture was, went on? I think that was pretty sort of instantaneous. I don't really know how that, that's either there or it's not. And, um, and I think we just got really lucky that. I mean, the whole group got on so well and sort of there was like an instant, I feel, rapport. I didn't get to hang out with these guys in the house, which was quite disappointing. So, um, yeah, so luckily it just sort of came quite easily. Back here. So the question was, what did you find most challenging about working on this project for the actors? Um, I've, I've got the microphone now. <laughs> uh, what was most challenging for me? Um, jeepers. This q and I mean, it was, a, it was a really long way to set. Um, so as, as Gregor was saying before, you know, we, we had to 
fly to Perth and then drive three hours and then get on a boat. Um, so it was a, it was a really long journey. But um, I, I, I don't know. It wasn't it wasn't there wasn't major challenges for me. I mean, the big one was probably with the music, but. Um, yeah, the Australian accent, coming all the way from New Zealand, that one's really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, difficult. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah there, was, there was many challenges, but I'm sure more for other people than um, myself. Like me. Yeah, like Julia. <laughs> um, I definitely found acting a new thing, but I was very lucky to be, uh, to be with people that, are so professional and so helpful. I was incredibly frightened on the first day on set having to uh, to be another person and do it in front of 50 people. Um, but George actually was incredible because he made it feel like it was just the two of us and he kept on whenever there was a gap between shooting, he'd sort of... Uh, just come up to me and sort of connect and that was really nice because I think that's what made it feel real. It didn't feel like it was pretend and I guess maybe that's what acting is. <laughs> Did you want to um, I Honestly, like a bit of a challenge for me was uh, the water aspect because... <laughs> Because uh, Georgie's like a, you know, she's an Australian woman and Australians are, you know, they all live generally by the water and grow up in the water more than the land. And I'm from Scotland and <laughs> we drive to the water and we sit in the car <laughs> with sandwiches and we think that looks nice but it looks really cold. <laughs> um, so I, I kind of... I had I did a lot of things for the first time, you know, like um, being out of my depth in the o ocean and uh, d diving and like d you know opening my eyes. My son taught me how, <laughs> how to open my eyes underwater before I travelled to Australia. Um, yeah, so the swimming probably. We have time for one more. I'm gonna go here. That was me. I trained really hard. So the question was, is the last mirage that he sees at the end um, you coming to rescue him? Um, no, he gets rescued. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, look, I, I, I guess that's the great thing about films and, 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 I, think about, and I think about this film as well is that people um, make it their own. And, you know, I, I definitely, as a filmmaker, um, you know, my interpretation of the ending is that he gets rescued and they get together and live happily ever after. Um, <laughs> but um, but if, you, if you see it differently, then that's fine. Well, I think we have to turn the theater over, but I want to thank you all so much for coming and for doing thank this. You. Thank you. Thank you.